Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, in today's endgame video, I'm going to go over the Vanchura position or the Vancura position as it's also known. One of the most important theoretical rook endgames, which every tournament player should know in my opinion, and which can save you a lot of games. So previous to this, we've been looking at uh, rook and pawn against rook endgames in which the rook wasn't on the rook file, so on the A or the H file. And those are way more complicated. When the rook is on the H file, it's generally much easier to draw. Of course, there are positions that are lost and of course you can mess them up, even if they are drawn positions. But there are some techniques such as the Vanchura, which you which you should master and that will enable, enable you to draw a lot more games. Okay, uh, so we are looking at a position in which uh, the attacking side, the side with the pawn, has advanced their pawn uh, up the board uh, and their rook is behind the pawn. That's the uh, Vanchura position. So the attacking side's rook is behind the pawn. That's very important. This position is applicable regardless of where the pawn is. It can be on a2, a3, a4, a5. It's different if the pawn is on a7. We are going to look at that first. Okay, so uh, this is the Vancura or the Vanchura position. Before we look into that, I want to show you this position, which is important for understanding the more complicated Vanchura. So what's the difference? The only difference is that the pawn has advanced from the 6th to the 7th rank, and this makes the position an automatic draw. This is just a draw. So what you have to do in this position, regardless of who it is to move, let's say it's white to move, white plays king to f3. What you have to do, you just wait and keep the rook behind, keep the rook in front of the pawn and therefore prevent the white rook from moving. What's key in this position is that you leave your king on these two squares. These are the safe squares. And what do I mean by safe squares? Let's say black doesn't play rook to a2. Let's say black doesn't wait. Let's say black doesn't know these endgame rules and he plays king to f7 trying to go uh, and help uh, the black rook hurt the pawn. So uh, this position is immediately lost. Why? Well, if you want to pause the video, it might be useful for you to find the technique yourself, to find this pattern yourself. The solution is, of course, rook to h8, and now the position is hopeless. Uh, if you take the pawn, uh, the white rook checks and wins your rook and wins the game. And if you try to attack the rook, then, well, white promotes a pawn and you can either fight against the rook or against the queen. So uh, leaving the king on these two squares is essential. This is also going to be applicable to the Vanchura position, so keep that in mind. So the only way to lock the rook down to the defense of the pawn is by keeping the king on the seventh rank and by keeping the king on these two squares. If you advance, uh, even if you stay on the F or the G files, let's say you go to F6, then of course rook to F8 would lead to the same variation. Now if you escape the check, I'm just going to promote and win the game. So remember that in this simplified position when the pawn has already advanced to a7, uh, the only thing you have to worry about is keeping your king on these two squares, everything else is easy, just move the rook around. So let's say rook to a2, king to e4, rook to a6, king to d5, rook to a1, king to c6, doesn't matter. You can allow the king to go towards the pawn, rook to a2, King to b7, and the thing you have to remember, as soon as the king reaches the seventh rank, uh, the I'm sorry, the b file or the the knight file, which now prepares simply uh, a rook move and the king coming into the corner. So let's say black does nothing. So I go here, you go here, and if you check me now, I'm going to go into the corner. If you move away, I'm going to play rook to b7, king to b8, and queen my pawn and win the game. So remember that as soon as the king reaches the knight file, so prepares this maneuver, you just check it away. And there is no escaping the checks. Wherever the king goes, you can just check it around, wherever the king goes. So if it goes, goes toward you, you check it again. If it goes here, you check it again, and it's perpetual check. If the king moves towards your rook, just keep your rook on the a file. If the king goes here, your king should be on the a, your, I'm sorry, your rook should be on the a file to prevent the white rook from moving. Once again, remember that your king cannot move. This is simple. So if the pawn is on a7, this is an automatic draw. The Vancura position or the Vanchura position is different. Why? Because the pawn is not on the seventh rank yet, this gives the white king the option to reach a safe square on a7 and help promote the pawn. So let me show you what happens if uh, black waits in this position. So let's say you go, oh, it's white to move. King to f3, you wait. King here, you wait. You try to employ the same technique. As soon as this happens and you check, 
the king is going into the corner and your position is now lost. If you try to wait again, uh, the rook just comes around, rook to b6, and the next few moves are going to be king b7, pawn a7, pawn a8, queen, rook takes queen, king takes queen, and, and white wins. So you cannot wait. We are going to be employing the technique that Josef Vanchura came up with uh, in the early 20th century. He unfortunately died really young. He was only 22 or 23 when he died. And I read somewhere, I don't remember where, that Siegbert Tarasch uh, and Emmanuel Lasker, I think, when, th when they were playing, Lasker analyzed this position, or Tarasch, I'm sorry, analyzed this position to be uh, a win for white, uh, which is wrong. So Vanchura is the one who came up with this solution. So it might seem counterintuitive and tricky. And first I'm going to show you how to reach the position. This is not the Vanchura yet. The way to reach it is as soon as the white king moves up the board, you check it from behind. And what you do with that, let's say the king advances to e4, which is the best move. You now place your rook on the sixth rank. And this side offensive on the a pawn keeps the rook locked down again you have to make sure that you keep your king on the safe square so that you don't blunder into that same variation. And as soon as you get your you get your rook to the sixth rank, the white king cannot make any progress. This is absolutely remarkable. So let's say king to d4. You can now just wait. You can now just wait. Uh, king to d5, I'm sorry. Uh, if king to d5, you just check. If king to uh, c6, uh, you just check. Whatever he does, you just check. If he tries to go towards uh, the pawn, try to hurt it forward, you just check. He goes here, you check. There is no escaping the perpetual checks. So one thing that the king can try, let's say after king to e4, rook to f6, he's, he tries king to d4. Uh, he can try coming uh, to, the, to the b5 square. And if left unchecked, he can make progress. Okay, I'm going to show you why. Uh, if king to d4, let's say rook to e6, which is absolutely correct, you can also go um, rook to g6 or rook to h6. Uh, so rook to e6, king to c5, rook to f6, king to b5. Now it's important to check the king uh, with rook to f5. Otherwise, I'm going to show you from the starting position. Okay, uh, Let's say in this position, king to b5 is played. This is now the normal Vanchura. We have the we have the rook on the sixth rank. It's important to play the move rook to f5 to force the king away. And regardless of where the king's go, king goes, whether it goes up and down, you check it again. If, for example, after king to b5, you play the move rook to h6, a waiting move, you leave the king unchecked, uh, then it will block us from entering the a6 square and simply by playing a7 win the game. So what am I talking about? If a7 is played here, we don't have a way to save the position rook to h5, king to b6, whatever we try, if we try king to, if we try rook to h1 coming from behind, because we cannot check anymore, just rook to g8 wins, anything wins. So what's important is that as soon as the king reaches the b5 square, you need to check it away. And you need to be able, if the pawn advances, this is the second key thing, you need to be able to come behind the pawn with uh, with your rook. So let's see how, how that works. Rook to f5 is of course the correct move. Let's say king to c6. Most resistant. Rook to f6 check. King to d5. You can now just wait. Just rook to b6. Doesn't matter. If king to e5, well that's a normal move. Doesn't really matter. You can go, you can go rook to c6. Uh, nothing is really going on. But if after rook to b6, white tries to play a7, trying to make progress and then trying to round your rook up, then you simply go uh, rook to a6 and we now have the original position where the pawn has already advanced to a7 and our rook is behind it. So the only thing we have to remember is that if the king should reach the knight file, we check it away and it's an automatic draw. So a7 would be a horrible mistake. So, in this position, uh, let's say the white king tries to force a win by playing king to c5. We just wait. As soon as the king reaches our rook, we go to b6. As soon as the king reaches b5, we check it away. As we said, if we don't check it away, if we wait now, then a7 is deadly. And white just wins with simply rook to g8 check. Okay, so let's go over that again. So, king to c5 rook to f6. If king to b5, we check. Whatever he does, we check him away. So check here, check here, 
half check here. And now in this position, let's say the king reaches um, king king d5 and you play rook to b6. What if white checks? What if white checks in one of those positions? Well, nothing. The important thing is, and you can go either uh, to the back rank or to the, to the sixth rank, it doesn't matter. The important thing is to stay in the vicinity of your safe squares. Okay, so you can go just king to g6, doesn't really matter. Whatever he does, you are perfectly safe and there is no way for, for white to make any progress. Okay, so let us go over uh, the position once again. How do we reach Avanchura position or Avancura position? So let's say king to f3, the starting position. There are several ways of reaching the Avanchura position, but the easiest way is just as soon as the king starts marching forward, check from behind and come to f6. There are some uh, positions, of course, in which the king is too close, which are just lost. So in this position, if the king was in c5, you would just lose the game. There is no defense. So Ventura works when the king is far away. So king to f3, we check the king. The king moves forward, we come to f6. And now whatever he does, the only thing you have to remember is when the king gets to, f to b5, you check it away. You cannot allow a7. The second thing you have to remember, if the Pawn advances to a7, you play rook to a6, and, and that's it. Easy draw, a very easy draw. One question which uh, I asked myself when I was uh, trying to analyze this position is what if the king doesn't want to leave the second rank? What do I do now? Well, since I don't have a check, I can just read out my rook another way, uh, and I can just go rook to a5. So in this case, let's say king to e3, I can now just go... Uh, rook to f5. If the pawn advances, I again go to a6. If the king advances, I go rook f6 and we have the same position. So it's a fairly simple draw. I have seen people lose this. I didn't know this myself a while back and I'm sure I wouldn't have drawn it easily. It's hard to find over the board if Zygbert Tarash couldn't find it and Lasker thought he had superpowers or whatever, then it's not easy for us normal players to, to find this. Remember the Ventura and I, I hope this was useful. Let me know what you think. And tomorrow uh, there won't be a middle game video because my tournament is starting. So tomorrow I will record my own game. Hopefully a good one. Uh, see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.